This video is sponsored by Econolite, an online seller of quality lighting. Hey, this is Bill for Sparky Channel, and today I'm going to introduce you to the Nikkor LED 3-inch gimbal recessed downlight, and this is called the DGD3 series. And you might be wondering right away what this box is. And this box is a combination box. This is where you make your connections. You see these are push-in connectors, a three connector uh, for the black and the white and the ground. If you're wondering what the yellow wire with the green, it, that's your ground wire. So that's where you'd hook up your ground. So uh, half of it, or, a little, or about two-thirds of it actually, is for wire hookup. This part is your driver. And you say, oh man, why is the driver over here and the lights over here? And that's for heat management. You see, the driver is separated from the light for a better heat management so that the entire unit will last longer. Here's your gimbal light right here. And this moves up to 44 degrees. And you can see it pretty, pretty well in the back here. You see it move? It'll move up to 44 degrees in, in 360 degrees worth of directions. So that is what is meant by a gimbal light. You can have your light facing whatever direction you want. The light has some strong springs here that hook on to the ceiling. You put it through a hole. They recommend a two and three quarter inch hole. This is a three inch gimbal. And they recommend a two and three quarter inch hole. So that's what I would recommend. And then these springs clip onto the back of your ceiling drywall. The gasket helps the light to become damp location rated. If anything were to ever happen to the light itself, you would just change it out right here. You open up this connector. And it comes apart like that. And you see there's a little bump inside right here. And it goes into this space right here. So you line it up and you push it all the way in and then there's a connector right here. And you go backwards a little bit until it clicks and then you screw it on and then you have a nice connection. The power consumption of this recessed down light is only 7.9 watts and it gives you the light equivalent of 50 watts of incandescent light. This unit is IC rated which means insulation contact. You can abut this against the insulation and you can have the light in the junction box in direct contact with insulation. This light is dimmable to less than 5% with most dimmers. In fact, I'm gonna hook this up with two more of these down lights, so we'll have three. So I'll show you how to wire three down lights and we're gonna put a dimmer on it. This particular light is 3000 Kelvin which will give you 588 lumens. It's also available in a 2700 Kelvin light, which will give you a little less lumens, 571 lumens, and it's available in a 4000 Kelvin light, which will give you more lumens, 603 lumens. One really neat thing about this light is that it has a CRI rating of over 90. That means color rendering index and that tells you how true the light is. How much things that you're looking at will look as true as possible to their natural color. The light has a five year limited warranty. Although this is a three inch down light, it's actually three and three eighths inches from here to here. And by the way, this is aluminum, this area right here, and it's powder coated white. These lights have an estimated 60,000 hours of maintenance-free operation. So let's go wire some of these down lights and we'll hook it up to a dimmer. Here I've made a small display to show how the recessed down lights are installed and how they're wired. I've put them close together so that you can easily follow the wiring from light to light and from the dimmer to the lights. The first thing I did to make my little display is I drilled the holes and the manual for the lights recommends two and three quarter inch holes. So I used a two and three quarter inch 
pull saw. I recommend using low speed on your drill if your drill has a low speed. Now run a 14-2 with ground cable or a 12-2 with ground cable from your switch box to your attic or recessed area above your lights. This is the way I like to run the cabling. This is the first light in the series and then this is the middle of the run light and so this will be the end of the run light. In reality these lights would be about four feet apart. I'll remove the knockout from the first junction box with a screwdriver and then I'll install a cable clamp. I'll use my ideal forged wire strippers to cut the cable and then I'll use the same tool to strip the sheathing from the cable and to strip the wires themselves. Now I'll put both of the prepared cables in the junction box and I'll tighten the cable clamp. I'll connect all three of the grounds together in the provided wire connector. Then I'll connect all three of the neutral wires together in the provided wire connector and then I'll connect all three of the black wires together in the provided wire connector. Now I'll close up the little junction box and I'll push the box up into the hole. The middle of the run lights are wired in a very similar manner to the first light. The only difference being is that the cable that goes to the first light is coming from the switch and the cable coming to the middle of the run lights will be the cable coming from the previous light. Other than that, the wiring is exactly the same. All the grounds get connected together, all the neutrals get connected together, and all the black hot wires get connected together. An end of the run light is different, however, because there's only one cable coming to it. The connectors inside the little junction box are all gonna be for three wires but you will only be using two wires in each connector. So it's okay, you just leave one of the spaces open. So there's going to be two ground wires, which go together, and two white wires, which go together, and two hot black wires, which are connected together. Now close up your end of the run junction box and push the junction boxes up into the ceiling so that just the connector wires are hanging down. Now push the connectors together and screw on the locking sleeve. Now bend the springs up towards the top and then fit the springs in through the hole and when the light is all the way in the springs will come apart and put pressure on the top portion of the drywall which secures your light to the drywall. Now do the same procedure for all of your recessed down lights. A tip is to make nice clean round holes with a hole saw because that will make for better and longer lasting results. Also, take care to make sure that your springs are sitting on top of the drywall and not on top of a cable. Now I'll hook up a quality dimmer and I will increase the light to the maximum. See they're nice and bright now and now I'm decreasing the light with the dimmer and we're going to go all the way down to 5%. There it is. And now we're going to go back up. This dimmer is working great with these lights. I'll put a link in my video description for the Econolite website and I'll put a special promo code in my video description that will give Sparky Channel viewers 20% off site-wide on all items on the Econolite website. And the promo code will be good until June 30th, 2021. I'll put a link for the Nikkor Recessed Gimbal LED Downlights. And for the Sea Light by Cree Lighting, 3,120 lumens LED dusted on light. And I'll put a link for the Natura LED 1700 lumen LED kitchen light that I made a previous video about. Also, try out Econolite's customer service. They're there Monday through Friday, 6.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time. And the phone number is on your screen right there. And they're trained to be able to direct you to the product that you need. And they'll discuss how many lumens uh, you might want for a certain light and topics like that. 
Thanks for watching.